Good morning, I'm Jason Phillips and uh, this is the first segment of In the Field with UK Extension. I'm the Extension Agent for Agriculture and Natural Resources in Simpson County and today I've got a good friend with me and uh, Extension Agent in, neighboring, in, in the neighboring county. Yeah, my name is Adam Huber. I'm the Agriculture and Natural Resources Extension Agent in Allen County. And uh, Jason, today we're going to talk about a topic that uh, a lot of farmers don't really pay much attention to during until during like the spring and early summer months, mm -hmm. and that's poison hemlock. Yeah, poison hemlock is is a is a weed that we've seen become a lot more prevalent uh, over the last few years, and it's a weed that uh, our livestock producers definitely need to be mindful of. And you make a good point; they notice it when it's large and catches your attention. Right. But the best time to treat this weed is in November when it's not quite as noticeable. Right. Yeah, and during the springtime, it's really noticeable because it's along the roadsides. You'll see it along the roadsides a lot, uh, especially uh, in, in pasture fence rows. Um, it's, it's, it's everywhere. Um, and during the springtime, it has a big white cluster of, of white leaves. Uh, and so that's, that's when typically most people will say, well, I've got a problem. And now they come to us and they want to fix it. But really, they've kind of waited too long. It's really hard, especially you know, if you wait until until that's noticeable, until they're that big, you know, it's really hard because as you can tell, I mean, here we are, this is early November, and um, we we found this plant, which is probably mid-shin. This would be considered in the rosette stage, poison hemlocks, the biennial. And you can see here that the tap roots are already pretty sizable. So you can imagine once this plant gets a little bit larger, uh, it could be extremely hard to kill um, just due to the size of the tap root and the overall, you know, just like any plant, when it's young and tender, it's a lot easier to control with our herbicides. Right, and, and two, whenever those plants do get large, they kind of have a more of a, a woody type stem and they're, you know, they, they can get pretty large. They're really, they? really tough really and, tough and they get what like six to eight feet tall something like that some so. of the stalk the main stalk that shoots up in the in the second year yeah can can get very tall right and so so how toxic do you think these plants can be to our livestock well um number one it competes a lot of times if it's in our hay or pasture field it does compete with desirable plants so that's a knock against it but uh, typically, animals have to ingest uh, two tenths to five tenths of a percent of this to uh, be toxic. So, on a mature cow, it's going to take quite a bit to actually cause a mortality. However, horses, um, goats, and cattle are, are most susceptible to it, although there's other animals, classes of livestock that can have issues from poison hemlock. but. Uh, we oftentimes, you know, calves and smaller uh, livestock are where we see the deaths. Uh, typically, they don't prefer toxic hem, uh, uh, prefer poison hemlock, but um, they, uh, if there's not a lot of desirable forage around, they'll graze it. Or, of course, if it's in a bale form, they're going to consume it. Right. And, and and you know, that's a lot of a lot of the problem is some folks uh, during the early spring months they don't actually know how to ID this plant and they will actually right. roll it in their hay. Right. So so what what are some some things we can do to actually get out there and, and look for to, to identify this plant? Yeah. And one thing also that I would mention is aside from mortalities, it can cause deform uh, you know, uh, deformation in in pregnant animals, you know, the the calves can be deformed. Uh, it can cause respiratory issues, so not just death, but a lot of issues. Right. So we just want to, the main thing is we want to get it out of our right. pastures and hay fields. Right. So how do we do that? We want to identify it. First, you'll take a look, and it's got small uh, dissected leaves, as you can see here. Uh, it looks and is often confused with uh, wild carrot, also known as Queen Anne's lace. Uh, it puts off the white flowers, the white blooms as well. Right. But uh, it's a lot, and the, and the leaves are similar, but uh, the stem is a lot more uh, herbaceous, not as woody. Right. And it's uh, typically green, just green. Now you'll see here, 
that this is green with some purple splotches and that's uh, very typical that's characteristic of uh, poison hemlock and then of course if you dig it up you'll find this large tap root so that's typically how you'd ID it. Of course, if you've had problems with it in the past in a particular area, if you remember seeing it where it's really noticeable, then it's gonna come back the next more year times more than, than not, right. you're gonna have issues there. I mean, a mature plant can put off 35,000 to 40,000 seeds. Right, so yeah, especially you know if we get a big wind gust, a uh, big storm come through, those, those seeds get spread really quickly right. and they can, I'm assuming, travel, travel for miles if they get up. So, yeah, yeah, and I mean, we can make a huge headway in controlling this plant in November and in the fall months, which, I, like I said, November is the preferred time to treat. Um, and it's not that you're going to kill them all, but you can make a big dent in the population. Right. And, it, you know, it's going to be a, an ongoing effort, but I do feel like if you would control it now, you're gonna have a lot better success right. long term. What chemical do you recommend spraying for to control all of the poison hemlock? Typically in the fall, we would recommend using 2,4-D. 2,4-D is, uh, does a good job, and especially on smaller plants right. before they get really large and established. And if you wanna to refer to our publication, AGR 207, that's pasture weeds in Kentucky. It's got some color pictures and some control uh, charts and efficacy charts that'll tell you what to use on various weeds. Right. And poison hemlock is listed in there. Right. And another thing too good about using 2,4-D is it will also control some of your other broadleaf weeds that you're not wanting in your pastures and in your fence rows too. Exactly. So that'd be yeah. That's a, that's a great 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 uh, option there. Just an additional benefit, yeah. like any thistles or yep. um, you know November is a great time to right. spray thistles as well right so if anybody has any additional questions or do you have anything else you'd like to address I think, I think we've covered it pretty good um, you know and, and if you all have any other questions you know you can come uh, to any of our extension offices call the UK Cooperative Extension office in your county and, and those folks there will be glad to assist you and come out and even help you ID these plants and, uh, and help you help you get a management plan uh, going. Sure. Yeah, for sure.